Was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to talk about the three musketeers. Although, really, just one of them. Though, we will reference one we saw the other day. You see, the other day, I introduced you to the rather extreme looking Gundramon. And it turns out Gundramon is one of the three musketeers. Well, turns out we've got another one we need to have a little bit of a look at today. It is Magna Kidmon. And we also need to look at an option card that we blatantly knew was coming. Translations from the lovely folks at Ensan Gaming and the lovely folks over at DigimonCard.dev, who also provided any translated proxies we're using. And what we've got here is Magna Kidmon. We've got a 12 cost to play normally, 4 cost to Digivolve, 11,000 power, which makes it more expensive than average. We expect 11,311. This is slightly above. And we've got Security Attack plus 1. And security attack plus one is nice, it's it's fine, it's nothing to get ridiculously over the top excited about, but it's a nice little bonus, instead of taking out one security card, you take out two. It's not really a reason to play a level six Digimon, I mean this is a red Digimon, right? So we could go back to the starter deck, the red starter deck, the very first red cards we ever saw, and we could pull out that level four Greymon, which gives you security attack plus one, and then you can go up into any red level six you like. Or any other level 6 that can digivolve from red at some point. And then you've got security attack plus 1. It's a fun thing. It's cool. But it is absolutely no reason to play a level 6 at this stage in the game. Not with a card pool we've got. But when you digivolve into it. You may play a 7 cost option card from your hand. Without paying its cost. If you didn't do that. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 4,000 power or less. And you might think that this sounds just a little bit familiar, and you would be right. Because this is, in fact, the exact same skill that we saw on Gundramon. Okay, fine, it's not exactly the same, I'm lying to you. Magna Kedmon here plays it from your hand, and Gundramon looks at the top five cards of your deck, and then plays one from there if there is one. For what it's worth... I kind of like Magna Kidmon better, because I like the certainty. If you did evolve into Magna Kidmon, you are going to know for a fact whether you actually are able to do this or not. Whether you have a card to play or not. Whereas Gundramon here, you can dig a little bit, you can grab a card you don't have, but you might whiff. So essentially, you don't really want to whiff, and whiffing is a, a bad thing. So Magna Kidmon, yay for certainty, whereas Gundramon here, you can essentially dig if you don't have the card that you want, Gundramon lets you dig for it, whereas if you don't have the card you want for Magna Kidmon, it's kind of like, ha, gutted, which is clearly not what you're looking for. But of course, the other day I told you, look, we are talking about a seven cost option card. We are talking about a black Digimon that lets you play a 7 cost option card for free. There is absolutely no chance whatsoever this set is going to come and go without giving us a 7 cost black option card. That was never going to happen. It was basically impossible. Because they don't do that. And I'm not just talking about Digimon, I'm talking about card games generally. It's far too much foreshadowing to not give us that card. Well, we have that card, ladies and gentlemen. We have a seven-cost black option card. It apparently is called Gelwaltschwarmer. And I'm probably pronouncing that terribly. But it's a seven-cost option card. Very expensive. And as a security, it adds it to your hand. Not plays it normally. Usually, these really expensive cards just work if they come as a security. But there's a reason why. If you control a free Musketeer Digimon, this option card can be used ignoring its color condition. Oh, so it's still a seven cost option card and there's no chance to play it for free. However, you do get the option of playing it regardless of whether you've got a black Digimon in play or not. I.e., if you have no black cards in play, no Tamers, no Digimon, etc., but you do have a free musketeer, then you are essentially allowed to play this regardless, even though you don't have uh, the relevant black card in play. Okay. Is it worth it? Well, it destroys all seven cost or less Digimon. And I don't know how I feel about this. 
because it could be absolutely stunningly flat out brilliantly amazing or it could be kind of rubbish like if we're looking at really expensive option cards the gold standard is still probably Gaia Force Gaia Force is an eight cost card very expensive although it is free if it comes out as a security but the thing about Gaia Force is it deletes one of your opponents Digimon and there's no faffing about no if this or if that or conditions or any of that it just deletes one of your opponents Digimon which is brilliant it means whenever your opponent's got one thing that you really don't want to deal with you don't have to deal with it it's a great silver bullet to literally anything that is not what we've got here now this is phenomenal as a board wipe but it depends what you're playing against if your opponent has got three Digimon and they're all eight cost or above then this is a garbage card that does nothing. If you're playing against a Rookie Rush deck and they've got six Digimon out and they're all quite low, then this will absolutely wipe the board, and that's lovely. I mean, if we want to compare it to a Digimon, and I know we don't always want to compare option cards to Digimon, but bear with me here, we could take a little bit of a look at Volcanic Dramon. This is often played as a counter to these Rookie Rush decks. Now, this is an 11 cost, and when you play it, you delete all Digimon with 4,000 power or less. Now, the fact that you're getting 7 cost or less means you'll get a lot more Digimon. And the fact that you are playing 7 cost rather than 11 is good. But you also don't have a level 6 Digimon with security attack plus 1 in play. If you really want the board wipe, this is better in the short term, worse in the long term. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, and we do need to really stress this, it says destroy all seven cost or lower Digimon. It does not say destroy all of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of seven or less. It is all Digimon, yours and your opponent's. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is very very different indeed this will get your own as well now for you it's fine you can plan around it you can make sure you did evolve any that you need to before you play this although you might not have the memory you need to did evolve and then play this etc i'm gonna leave that one all up to you my point is this can backfire massively so let's give this card in a vacuum free wassies. I am not as impressed as I probably should be. The fact that it's really expensive and you don't play it for free as a security card. The fact that it will get your Digimon as well. The fact that it's often not going to do anything. It has a ridiculous amount of potential. But there are too many games and too many turns where this is going to end up doing nothing. So to go back to Magna Kidmon then, this is not the only option card on the board. When we talked about Gundramon, I said, look, we don't have a 7 cost black option card at the moment. We will get one at some point. The thing to remember is both of these cards do not actually let you play a 7 cost card of the appropriate color. It is any 7 cost card. But obviously with Magna Kidmon, you're going to want to really play red. Or the black one because you can play it because of Magna Kidmon. You know, Terra's Cluster is a great card. But do you really want to play Terra's Cluster? Are you playing any green Digimon? The answer is you're probably not. Let's not worry too much about it. But the good news is Red do have seven cost option cards that we can have a little bit of a play with. They're not like black. They actually do have options. Well, I say options. I mean option. You see, there is one but it's Transcendent Sword. And Transcendent Sword is... What's Transcendent? It's a 7 cost card. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 11,000 power or less. If you have a Digimon with Greymon or Omnimon in its name, then it's 15,000 power or less instead. It is a slightly nerfed, but slightly cheaper Gaia Force. And we've already said how great Gaia Force is. And 11,000 power is the average level 6. So essentially, the only thing you're not getting here is particularly powerful level 6s. And bearing in mind that Magna Kidmon is a level 6 red Digimon, you absolutely could Digivolve it up into an Omnimon, and then you'd be able to get a 15,000 power or less when you Digivolved into your next Magna Kidmon. And the thing is, cards like Transcendent Sword, they are 
emergency slash luxury cars. They're too expensive to just drop willy-nilly. So either you have to, there is a Digimon on your opponent's side of the board that you have to take out, you have no choice. It's, you've got to just pay the memory and deal with it. Or you just end up with a turn where you just happen to have a whole bunch of memory. So you play it because, you know, you might as well, yeah? You've got the memory to spare. And what this does is it turns a card like this into, yeah, why not? There might not be a Digimon that I have to take out right at this very moment, but I can take out a Digimon and I'm not actually paying any memory to do so. And that's what's so awesome about it. I am still a little bit hesitant here. Because the fact of the matter is, yes, you get to play a seven cost option card for free. And yes, it can be Transcendent Sword and that's lovely. But you've still got to have the right option card in your hand, which is not a guarantee. And then you've still got a level six, which is sitting there and all it's got is security attack plus one. And like I said earlier, I'm not saying security attack plus one is bad. I am saying we have a plethora of other options to get security attack plus one. And I'm not sure it's special enough on its own. So the question comes down to whether you think it is worth it. And the answer is, I'm going to leave that one up to you. For now, I'm giving it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. It's a fun looking new card. But I look at this and I do not get that deck building urge like I do with some other cards. But I'd like to know if you do. I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.